Um, and with, with that, um, I think we can move on to our first more in-depth presentation, right, for, um, uh, for more of the team. And I'd like to invite uh, Marvin. Um, thank you, Andrew, once again. And Marvin, yep, uh, we can see you and probably hear you too. Uh, I think so. Yeah, great. So welcome, Marvin. Um, and Marvin is a high school senior and mechanical engineer working at the Portland State Aerospace Society on the thermal and mechanical design of the Sirius Flux. I hope I'm pronouncing it well. Uh, camera mission. Um, all the abstracts are also the frames and preparing uh, the one YouTube set for flight. And we also have Hayden with us. So welcome, Hayden. Uh, is a senior mechanical engineer student who has been working with the Portland State Aerospace Society on projects such as the deployable turnstile antenna, the mechanical design and manufacture of the reaction wheels, and building uh, for flight for our uh, the um, the first um, one U cube set that um, you delivered. So um, now we're going to be hearing more in detail about the mechanical design and mechanical architecture um, of Orisat. So take it away, guys. All right, thank you. So yeah, today we're here to go a bit more in depth about the mechanical side of things um, than what Andrew had talked about. So let's just jump straight into it. So like Andrew had mentioned, Orsat uses a card cage design, and there's a few features that come with this. So the first is that we've implemented a card wedge clamp design, which really helps us ensure structural rigidity throughout launch. And that helps with vibration. That also helps with some thermal properties that we'll talk about later. Um, it's also designed with modularity in mind. So like Andrew had talked about, each student can have their own independent card so they can work on their own independent mission and their own independent um, subsystem um, as a part of this CubeSat. Uh, furthermore, the Orisat design also has a 40% greater packing density than the traditional um, PC-104 uh, CubeSat stack. So that's really um, one of the really important features that we have on our CubeSat architecture. Um, so you, as you can see here on the left and the right, we have a few screenshots of the CAD or computer design um, of our CubeSat. So on the left, you can see an assembled view with everything put together, including fasteners. And then on the right, you can see an exploded view. So as Andrew had mentioned, uh, everything is meant to be very scalable. And so, you know, a lot of the systems really look kind of the same between the 1U, 2U, and 3U. You can see that we're even reusing the solar panels and stuff like that. And it's all the same cars that can fit into everything. And so it's the same kind of mechanical clamping mechanism that is used across this whole kind of scalable 1 to 3U system. And uh, it really allows you to have a lot of flexibility with your missions and still kind of, you know, fill all your requirements and stuff. And so specifically talking about kind of the construction of it, uh, it's really easy uh, theoretically to make. Uh, you can just make all of the frames, you know, they're a flat plate. And so you can get that uh, made out of a half inch thick or 15 millimeter stock, just aluminum plate. Uh, theoretically, all machinable on a three axis CNC, uh, hopefully by students. That's the whole uh, kind of goal of our project. Uh, and so that's able to make it really low cost, which is really nice as well as we try to use standardized just COTS fasteners. Uh, we try to use as many like M2s as possible just to simplify uh, kind of the whole kit of it. You can see there on the right there, the, the one new structure kit. Uh, that's kind of all of our fasteners and tools and everything that we need to put the whole kind of flight unit together. And so it is very helpful not having to sort through like, you know, a billion different screws. And so standardization really helps both with cost and ease of manufacturability. And that kind of all comes together obviously in cost. And so, you know, for like obviously economies of scale come into play here. If you're buying maybe like two sets of the frames, it's around $1,200. But if you really start to like, you know, have a, a significant investment, you can get it down to about $400 per piece, which is really nice. And of course, all of our manufacturing drawings that you will need to uh, machine the frames are all available in open source on our GitHub page. And they're all completed according to the ASMI Y 14.5 standards. So those are all ready to be machined by any machinist in the US or internationally. So talking a bit more about the built-in card clamp. So the card clamp design is really intended to help us fully compress this card that we have um, onto a top ledge that we have on the frame, as you can see, um, circled in red. And what this allows us uh, to do is really provide some structural rigidity to our system um, that we wouldn't usually get with a card wedge or a, a card case system. Um, it also provides us with uh, several uh, thermal properties that are really essential to our architecture. 
So this entire architecture is designed to be thermally, but not electrically conductive. So you can see on the left-hand side, um, on the edges of each of the cards, there is a copper ground plane here. And this uh, allows us to essentially thermally connect each of the cards to the frames. All the frames are anodized with type 2 anodization um, in black, which allows us to keep this thermal transfer between the card and the frames so we can dump heat without um, establishing a ground connection, electrical ground. So there are parts of the parts of the satellite that we do want to have a ground connection now. And so to start that off, uh, those four little uh, bosses there you see circled in red are all kind of the frame connection points between each of the four, you know, plus X and uh, minus X, and then the two Y sides of the frames. And those are all non-anodized, so that way it is electrically conductive between those four sides. So you have this whole unit that's completely electrically conductive to itself, and then everything on that is anodized aside from a few specific connection points, specifically for the back plane. So you you can have an electrical ground connection there, as well as you can uh, specifically request, as in that top large circle there, uh, you can specifically request any of the top cards registers to be unanodized. Uh, that's specifically for our turnstile mission. So, you know, for any kind of like RF type grounding and stuff like that, it provides a lot of versatility. So, talking a bit about some of the really key subsystems uh, of ORSAT. Um, we have our battery card, which of course we need on every single cube set that we design. So there were a few considerations that uh, we had to keep in mind when designing the battery card. So first off, we wanted it to support um, at least three independent inhibits, which we used for, um, in order to meet the NAOREX or International Space Station deployment specifications. And we also wanted to ensure that it was thermally isolated from the structure, since the batteries uh, do need to be above zero degrees Celsius in order to um, operate optimally. So um, to resolve these problems that we came or ran into, um, we instead of using the inhibits that we tr uh, traditionally see um, on the z-axis of the CubeSat, we have four rail-based inhibits that protrude from the minus x and the plus x frames of the CubeSat um, in order to meet uh, four independent inhibits for each of the battery packs. And we also have a non-thermally conductive uh, con contacts on the edge of the card. So instead of having that copper crown, uh, ground plane um, accessible. We just have the very uh, basic fiberglass. Um, another one of the really important missions that we have on ORSAT, um, specifically our 2017 CSLI mission, ORSAT-1, um, is the Sears Flux camera. And this is an especially important system to consider because of the way that it's designed. So um, it is incredibly heavy, around one kilogram in mass um, due to the thermal masses, the copper thermal masses are incredibly heavy and make this an incredibly difficult subsystem to work with. And they also need to be thermally isolated from the structure because of the high thermal load from the shortwave infrared sensor that we have. Um, and also because of the sensitivity of the sensor, we do uh, want to keep it very, very cool. So um, I think around negative uh, five degrees Celsius or around negative eight degrees Celsius. And in order to resolve those problems, um, we ended up implementing fiberglass brackets, which allow us to mechanically mount um, this very heavy piece of mass onto the frame. So you can see there's quite a bit of versatility with their design, which allows us to increase the amount of mounting points for uh, increased rigidity for incredibly heavy systems like this. And um, we also isolated the copper thermal masses uh, from the conductive aluminum frames, which allow us to, once again, get that um, thermal isolation. So obviously, if you want a satellite and optical payloads, you will probably want to be able to point the satellite. And so that's kind of where our reaction wheels and ADCS systems come into play. Uh, you know, similarly, with all things ORSAT that you've seen so far, we try to make it very easily manufacturable, very you know, uh, low cost. And so that was definitely a challenge with this. But as you can see in that top right there, uh, you can fully machine kind of all the weird complex geometry that comes about with the tetrahedral reaction wheel design on a three axis. Uh, being able to drill those holes is another story that is you know, theoretically doable on a three axis machine, but you will need some kind of bracketing and stuff like that. But the point being is that it is actually a very low cost design. We've, we've had a few designs in the past that required like five axis milling, and, and this really brings down the cost, which was a really uh, fun development to work on. A uh, big thing is that it had to be space efficient, obviously, as you've kind of seen with all of our, uh, you know, incredible packing density. And so uh, kind of going through the design considerations of it, it uh, since it's a kind of an active system, we thought that having it on a card would cause a lot of like undue vibration that we didn't want to deal with. And so the, kind of the flexibility of our system allows us to just, you know, 
get rid of the card system for this and just bolt it directly into the frames. You can see that those five fasteners there are able to rigidly mount it to the frames. And so to keeping with that uh, you know, sp uh, very space efficient system, we have open air Z-axis as well as solenoid magnet torquers kind of occupying that space in between uh, the uh, tetrahedral reaction wheels. And talking about the solar panels, uh, you know, Andrew kind of talked about the electrical part of it just briefly. Uh, specifically, the thermal part is pretty interesting. You can see there on the left, those kind of copper traces around the outside of the card, and then even in the middle there, that specifically matches up with that kind of orthogrid pattern on the frames on the right there. And that's, uh, so that way they can be thermally conductive to the frames, and it's actually have, able to offload a lot of the heat load that comes on from, uh, you know, being exposed to the sun all day. And so that allows the solar panels to keep at a cooler temperature and operate at a more efficient uh, voltage. And then our SAR tracker, of course, is kind of the uh, passive component of our ADCS system. Uh, it is a pointed out the plus X of the CubeSat, as Andrew had mentioned, kind of cutting through the uh, Z axis is not exactly optimal for cards. And so it's really nice to be able to have it, this whole thing fit within a card and actually not take up like an exorbitant amount of space. And, and so it is nice to kind of prove that you can still have a complex system uh, that's even an optical payload without like cutting through multiple cards all at once. So just talking a bit about some of the tools that we use in order to optimize our workflow, um, we use uh, SolidWorks in order to do all our mechanical designs, including CAD manufacturing drawings. Um, in order to version all of our designs, we, util we utilize a tool called Git, um, which is an open source distributed version control system. And we use that to version control all of our CAD designs, all of our files, all of our drawings, um, just so that we're able to go back in case anything goes wrong, any of our designs don't necessarily work. We can always go back to an older revision. And with that, we also push all of our designs to GitHub. So all of our designs are pushed to GitHub for public release and also for storage um, for our own use. So all of our files, all of our source files are all accessible on GitHub if you're interested. So uh, you can see that uh, that top right picture is actually a picture from our recent test campaign for our flight uh, one UQs at. Uh, and so uh, I, I think someone was asking about that earlier. And so we did able to, we were able to vibrate vibration test it to the specifications of the Falcon 9 launch. Uh, it was kind of exciting actually because we, and for our vibration test, we didn't have to use Loctite, and we simply just torqued down the screws, and we had no nothing came loose, and we were able to go back afterwards, and everything was still like pretty much torqued to the same specification, which is really nice. It really kind of shows the robustness of our system. And so uh, although this is easy for a 1U. Maybe a 2U will be another story because that'll be a lot more fasteners to screw in. And so as I just talked about, you know, that was our, our test campaign. And this is our flight unit for Orsat Zero. Uh, it is our first satellite in our uh, state of Oregon here in the United States. Uh, it is, uh, we just handed off that last Friday. It'll be launched up in uh, early net of January 10th in 2022. And so it's super exciting. Again, thank you to Space Flight. And so Orsat Zero was kind of our um, our baseline kind of critical subsystems. You know, the battery, the onboard computer, and then uh, GPS antennas, and then our our passive like Star Trek component. And so Orsat Point Five is kind of aiming to first introduce our active component of the ADCS, the reaction wheels and magnet torquers, before uh, we go on to our next mission, which is Orsat One. And looking a bit further into the future, we have ORSAT-1, which is our the project that really started it all. So that was our 2017 CSLI program. Um, and this is uh, scheduled to hand off um, around 2022 with deployment in 2023. And what's really important about this payload is that this includes every single system that we've been working on. So this includes ORSAT Live, and this includes the incredibly, incredibly heavy Sears Flex camera. And this is really um, a test of everything. And hopefully, um, all of our previous missions, ORSAT 0 and 0 0.5, um, I'll provide the flight heritage we need in order to have a successful CSI mission. So yeah, thank you so much for listening. Um, all additional information can be found on orsat.org, and all of our CAD files and source files can be found on our GitHub. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, send some to our emails. Thanks for your time. Thank you, uh, thank you, Hayden and Marvin. Um, I think that we have time, yeah, for a couple of questions here, and uh, I can see some quick ones. Uh, there's one about the mass of the structural part uh, itself, like the one U version. Yeah. Of it. 
the one U is about 1.2 kilograms. Uh, so it is underneath the, the specification, but very close. Uh, kind of interesting, Marvin had talked about the uh, Sirius Flux camera, about how heavy that is. That's about 25% of our 2U mass. Uh, so our 2U comes in about 4 kilograms, which is <laughs> interesting. And, um, and I think the question was uh, also about the mass of the only the the mechanical part so without the the, the slots and without the without the cards and anything else just the design of the mechanical that's a good question i don't know if you weigh, weigh that yeah so off the top of my head i don't remember exactly but i think it comes in for a one use structure um around probably around 600 Grams? I'm not exactly sure off the top of my head, but um, if you are interested, um, all of our source files are on GitHub, and you can go ahead and mask them yourselves. Hey, cool. If I can jump in and say a quick thing, uh, this is a battle tank, and so there's a lot of optimization here to take weight off if you want to. We did, we don't need to. We we were under 1.333 kilograms, so screw it, we're great. But if you if you need to, you can. Is cool. it possible to uh, 3D print it? Did you do that before? Yes, definitely. So it is definitely possible to 3D print. Um, we've used um, uh, SLS to 3D print this for testing purposes. Um, we have our um, 1.5U and uh, 2U version of this structure 3D printed and tested. Um, we are looking to print a 3U version too, but 3D printing definitely works. OK. It was great, amazing talk. And I have to bring up this question, sorry, um, because you mentioned that you were using SOLIDWORKS. And there's already one problem for me, because I don't have it. <laughs> but I would like to, uh, to look into your design. So I was just wondering, why did you consider using, some, for example, a FreeCAD um, before? Or was there a specific reason that you went for SOLIDWORKS? Yeah, definitely. So um, for us, um, SolidWorks was just um, the easy option because we were sponsored by SolidWorks and it's really an easy tool for us to use. Um, we haven't really considered uh, using FreeCAD or anything of that sort, but um, I believe we have considered just uploading the files um, in just a very basic step format so you're able to access um, okay. using SolidWorks. Because it happened to me as well, this trap as a student. I had licenses yeah. for MATLAB, for Altium, blah, 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 blah. But once you graduate, then you realize, oops, I'm not student anymore, and I actually have to pay those big license fees. So this and is actually not an important easy. point, Arthur. So I'll, I'll just jump in. Sorry, sorry, Marvin and, and Hayden. Um, yeah, we, we cringe every time we boot SolidWorks on a Windows platform. Uh, and <laughs> uh, FreeCAD just isn't ready for us as students. And uh, SolidWorks is supported in education. and uh, we're moving more and more towards Onshape, which is a cloud provider that's cross-platform. And so we'll probably do that specifically to support Linux and Mac OS. Um, but we, we, in one day, we look forward to moving to FreeCAD, just as we've moved from EagleCAD to KeyCAD in the last year. Um, we'll probably start moving to more free and open source tools, but it, not right now. Okay. Good. One, um, one last question. Sorry to interrupt. Um, the, uh, you mentioned Git. Um, and uh, it just makes me wonder, because you're talking about step files and design files, binary files. So I assume you must have, how do you manage? Write very detailed uh, commit messages, or how do you know what commit was what? Yeah, so we do definitely have to write pretty detailed commit messages for everything. And like you said, with binary files, it does become uh, a bit harder to deal with. Um, our Git repositories are gigantic, I think around 10 gigabytes for our um, mechanical repository. So it's, it's hard to deal with, but it's what we kind of have to use in order to version our um, design files. But yeah, very long commit messages um, just to know what we're doing. As we've kind of gotten more uh, matured with the system, there's been less merge conflicts, but you know, there's always always a, a fun merge conflict to deal with. Thanks. Yeah, thank you guys. Is there any other questions? Or uh... I think we are on time right now. So, um, and I don't see any other questions here. So, yeah, I'd like to thank you again, both Marvin and Hayden, for the introduction to the mechanical.
aspects of Orisat and invite our next uh,